Well, hello everybody. This is Dr. Carmen Bryant, and this is Car Chronicles. You guys ready? All right, let's do this. Listen, when we're talking about narcissists, we're talking about someone that has arrested development. I'm not talking about the band arrested development, not the group. I'm talking about they have arrested development. Now, to understand what arrested development is, go ahead, Dr. Bryant, just explain it. I got you. I got you. If you look it up, it says. An abnormal state in which development has stopped prematurely. An ad- arrested development is no longer used as a term to describe um, developmental delays or developmental disorders in mental health. But it means that there's a plateau in development. Somewhere they have plateaued in development. And this arrested development can be a result of trauma, grief, or neglect. You know, we talk about that a lot when we're talking about narcissists. We're talking about trauma, grief, neglect, rejection, abandonment, abuse, sexual abuse, and then also environmental factors. You know, there is no definitive answer how narcissistic personality disorder has developed. You know, genetics, you know, uh, I said environment, you know, but those are all the things. But arrested development usually is caused, usually is caused by trauma grief what was the other thing I said neglect and it usually um, happens to or it usually has happened to a child a preteen or an adolescent who was unable to resolve something traumatic or an experience that is unresolved so as a result of this some of the emotional signs of arrested development is a lack of empathy difficulty with self-regulation lack of emotional maturity you can find that in a narcissist so it doesn't matter how old a narcissist gets these are a lot of signs of that narcissist now when you're all in wub in wub with the with the narcissist when you're in 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 wub with that narcissist and most of us have been you know you kind of overlook those flaws you overlook those red flags but now you know hindsight is 2020 you got to leave a situation because when you're in the midst of the situation it's hard to see you know, it usually takes a third person to look in and then they're telling you, but you just can't see it because hope is the last thing to go. And you always have this, you know, in your mind, you're sometimes, not sometimes, most all the time, you are in denial. And so you are in denial and you want the best. So you look over it and a lot of time you justify their behavior, you justify it. But now that you're out of the situation and you look at the situation, you can see exactly where they are immature. Even while you were in the situation, There were things that you saw that you know they were very immature in handling. So it doesn't matter what age they are, you kind of look at them, which becomes, you know, the longer you stay with them, the more you normalize the behavior, you know, it becomes a normal thing to you. Not saying that you agree with it, but it's almost normalized. You kind of excuse it. That's just how that person is. And you can see by the way that they handle themselves or handle situations or handle stress or especially, especially how they handle the thought of rejection or the thought of abandonment and watch how they act. Or you can look at them and, and it's almost like the only thing he or she didn't do was throw themselves on the ground and start kicking their legs or knocking things down like little kids do. That's the only thing they didn't do. But you're waiting like that's the only thing they haven't done. I'm waiting for them to just throw themselves on the ground and start kicking their feet because they have, they cannot self-regulate. Now, let me say this. Remember, if you go and read or you listen to the experts talk about, especially Dr. Romney, but if you listen to the experts talk about uh, narcissists, you know, narcissism is on a spectrum. And I don't like this, but this is something that is in the books. This is something that is in science. This is something that the psychological world talks of. I just don't like it because when you say narcissism or narcissist, it immediately is negative. And to me, there is no healthy narcissism. However, in the world of psychology, you hear them talk about, you know, it's on a narcissism is on a spectrum. You have healthy narcissism, which means you have a, you know, you have a healthy self-esteem, a healthy self-worth, and then you have pathological so you have non-clinical and and well you have healthy narcissism which is the healthy narcissist you know healthy uh, uh not healthy narcissist but in healthy uh, self-esteem health why don't we just say that a healthy self-esteem a healthy self-worth when you put narcissism in there it's like dropping pee in water you know it's like an oxymoron you can't be 
ugly and pretty at the same time. Well, you can. But, you know, it's, it's like an oxymoron when you say narcissism and healthy. It just it doesn't go together in the vocabulary. However, according to, you know, how psychology works and, the, the, you know, but we understand. We're, we're right here. We're right here. Because narcissism and, and healthy just doesn't work with me. But when they when they talk about the spectrum, you know, the healthy narcissism versus pathological narcissism, then you have a whole nother spectrum. With the pathological narcissism, you have the overt, which is the lower end of narcissism, where they're just discovering themselves. They don't even know who they are. They're very, they're very overt. They're very out there. You know, they're, they're, it's obvious. Overt means you're very obvious. Everyone can pick up on the traits. If you ever want to know what the five or six traits are within the nine traits of a narcissist, just look at an overt narcissist who is just out of control. They have no self-regulation, no emotional self-regulation. I mean, they have no no impulse control, nothing. You know, these are the ones that don't mind putting their paws on you. You know, those are the ones that usually were threatened to, to unalive you and the whole family, you know. And those are the ones that are just everywhere. Those are the ones that get the most domestic violence calls. You know, those are the ones that are out of control. Then you move up the spectrum a little bit to the, it's not to the covert, it's the over, the covert. So we're talking about the lower range, not the covert. I'm sorry, not the overt, but it's the low range. So forgive me, I, I, I misspoke. It's not over, it's the, well, they are over, but it's on the lower end of the spectrum, which is the low-grade narcissist, and you have the mid-grade narcissist. The mid-grade narcissist is beginning to realize that they are different. Not only are they different, you know, the lower-grade know that they're different, but the mid-grade begins to realize that they are different. They're beginning to start to understand that uh, cognitive empathy not emotional empathy, cognitive empathy, where they understand how emotions work. They begin to practice on people because they begin to see how emotions work. They're, they're, it's almost like data that's trying to like pick up on, you know, like a robot that's trying to pick up on how emotions work and when to apply it and when not to apply it, you know, when to press, when to push the button, when to do, I can make you scream, I can make you not scream. I can make you smile, I can make you not smile. Oh, they're beginning to realize oh, I have a little power. You know, I have a little power at this manipulation game. When they begin to exercise that little power, they, you know, you still know, sometimes you know that they're narcissists, and sometimes it doesn't really come out that quick because they're starting to integrate. They're starting to grow into themselves, into their skin. It's like a Sharpe that grows into their skin. And then you have the higher end. On the higher end, the malignant narcissist, the high end. You know, the, you got the low, mid, high. And on the high end, those are the malignant narcissists. Those are the ones that normally have antisocial personality disorder as well as narcissistic personality disorder. Those are the ones that have some sociopathic traits or sociopaths, psychopaths. Those are the ones that don't have a problem unaliving anybody, then go and buy a pizza and have a party with the family and just go on vacation as if nothing happened. These are the ones that have a lack of conscience. These are the ones, a lot of them lack conscience, lack remorse, because they have other things going on. But these are the ones that have finally discovered who they are. Not saying that they understand that they're narcissists, but but they understand the power in which they think they possess over people. They understand how to manipulate. They understand how to stay hidden in plain sight. They understand how to blend in with society and be that chameleon. And wherever they go, they just blend in. So it's harder to pick up on them. But these are the most vicious and the most dangerous of them all. But the one thing that carries over from low grade to mid grade to high grade narcissists is they still have arrested development. The higher the go, it's easier for them to hide. But once you offend them, cause a narcissistic injury, once they feel like they're being rejected, you know, even if they're making advances at you and you're not interested in them, immediately they're offended and they hold grudges and they still try to figure out how to get you back because you rejected my advances. And some of them are, are wounded enough to know that I can't deal with this right here. This one is going to cause me too many injuries. But these are the ones that they're... they're what we would consider cuckoo for cocoa puffs. I know that's not. I know that's not correct. You know, dealing as a professional, that's the only terms that I can use. But these are the ones that are really, they're just out of their mind. But they still all have the same thing in common. They all have arrested development. They don't know. How, excuse me. They don't know how to ask for something and take a no for an answer. You know, they 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 want what they want, so they. It's almost like they're asking you the question, but they already know what they want. So it doesn't matter what you say. They're going to figure out how to get it. But all of them have arrested development. That's what a narcissist is, an arrested development walking.